Well, good evening, says Hound Dog. Steve, wishing you a very pleasant evening. And I came across this uh, piece in RT. Uh, it's by Helen Biinski, and uh, it's really a good follow-up to the piece I just did on cancel culture. And this is dealing with freedom of speech. And the reason freedom of speech is so critically important to our society and to every ideology that you can think of is that freedom of speech is the way we define all our other rights. And if we can't use the correct language, if we cannot use the correct speech, and if we are not allowed to try and fail and then to retry or amend what we have said, how can we ever possibly learn or go forward? And, you know, th this whole idea of shutting down free speech is so concerning that even if I do make two videos in a row that are very similar, uh, I can't think of a better subject to reinforce and sadly I'm sure that most of my listeners are well on board with the whole idea of freedom of speech and uh, the consequences of losing such a valuable valuable asset and um, I would remind especially women but everybody really but especially women uh, who are so um, recent to come into the rights movement uh, your rights were based on the freedom of speech of suffragettes back in the late 18th century and the early 19th century, the likes of Emily Pankhurst, uh, you know, who stood her ground in the face of horrible opposition. The, these women were actually beaten on the street uh, for their opinions and for their emancipation. And uh, can you imagine that happening today? Google, Twitter, Facebook and YouTube would be all over you like a dirty shirt. So all of us, every single one of us, should not only praise free speech, but we should defend it. So here is the article. Words are violence, voting is terrorism, free speech is a threat. Where the media establishment can't win, they'll redefine. And as I said, this is by Helen Bajinski, and she's an American journalist and political commentator. Determined to stamp out Ron Think in all its forms, the media establishment has declared a holy war against free speech. Once the bedrock of US society, it faces a redefinition into something more convenient, or oblivion. If everyone is permitted to speak freely, their reasoning goes, people's lives will be put at risk. Those whose opinions diverge from the mainstream should not be permitted to voice those opinions, lest their words hurt people, not just people's feelings. Yet at the same time, as this self-styled Ministry of Truth calls for free speech to be swept into the dustbin of history, it insists its victim's freedom of speech is not under attack at all. In the past few weeks, establishment outlets from the New York Times to NBC to The Independent have issued calls for the very idea of freedom of speech to be rethought, or better yet, scrapped altogether, because it is no longer in harmony with modern society. This is a tacit admission that the media establishment's own opinions can't compete in the marketplace of ideas and that, despite their best efforts, they can't censor their way out. The establishment's cries for a bigger, better memory hole don't stop at praising social media censorship, though there's plenty of that. Twitter and Facebook's decision to suspend US President Donald Trump's accounts has been universally praised by the papers of record. Amazon's decision to kick the entire social media app Parler off its servers is right up there with storming the beaches of Normandy in the fight against fascism, according to these outlets. They've even moved on to demanding cable TV providers push conservative networks such as OANN and Newsmax overboard, and alternative platforms from Telegram to Mines are now in their crosshairs. But at the same time, as they insist this behaviour does not curtail the free speech of the tens of thousands of social media users who've been given the boot in the last few months, they've called for the very idea of free speech to be retired, as it supposedly has no place in the 21st century. The media establishment blames free speech for the raid on the Capitol earlier this month, with the Hill skewering social media platforms for putting their dependence on clicks and ratings above some sort of higher calling even though the media establishment's own dependency on clicks and ratings has forced numerous outlets to merge, downsize or even close offices as Facebook and Google eat their lunch. 
Even more absurdly, NBC claimed the FBI would have warned about the raid except they had concerns about the First Amendment. As if the FBI hadn't at some point designated almost every American as a domestic terror threat. The entire argument has the air of something cooked up at the last minute to justify a long desired end. And sure enough, the media have long been frustrated watching alt-media sites and YouTubers in their bedrooms producing quality content that also, in some cases at least, has the added value as somewhat resembling the world its audience inhabits. Yep, got to agree with that. Uh, most of us uh, YouTubers, seems to be, live in the real world because we're real people. Trying to deplatform the most popular content creators while pretending to uphold the noble mantle of the Fourth Estate has never been an easy balance to strike, and it must come as a relief for many establishment figures to finally dispense with the pretense of embracing freedom of speech. While not everyone in the media establishment is on board with this new direction, many of those opposed are too scared to speak up, lest they lose their job or be shunned by colleagues. But this sort of cowardly behaviour is what has turned the establishment into such a monster. In less than a decade, American liberalism was co-opted by a tiny fraction of screeching malcontents who shouted sanity into hiding with their insistence that words are violence and strong opinions they disagreed with were the literal equivalent of curb-stomping oppressed minorities. Because the silent majority, who, contrary to what has become the prevailing doctrine, were not all straight white males, were reluctant to go to war with the unhinged barbarians who'd shown up at their gates. Words that I don't like are violence became the official doctrine of the academy. Most of those who didn't like it merely gritted their teeth, held their tongues and groused in private about the excesses of their cultish colleagues. Whilst those colleagues indoctrinated class after class of impressionable young people, their dogma now dominates the media establishment to the point that journalistic awards are given out not for groundbreaking reporting, but for demonstrations of ideological fealty. Uh, that's code for virtue signaling. And indeed, truth just gets in the way. No wonder much of their audience has fled to YouTube and Twitter for their news. However reality averse their work may be, these zealots are keenly aware that their captive audience despises being lied to, demonised and told that the most normal behaviours, from studying the classics to voting to gathering with loved ones in their homes, constitutes racism, Nazism and attempted genocide. There is no way to package such outrageous slanders that will convince those thus degraded to swallow them. So the only option is to ban arguments from the other side. And this is the point that I've been making for a long time and a point that I hope that you will pay attention to. And that is that the Great Reset and the kind of world that we are moving into is so unpalatable that they have to hide and destroy anybody who's speaking out against it. And even they know that, and that's why they're doing this. This is why they've set this game up exactly this way. These restrictions were all in place before this happened, this takeover happened. Okay, and so, yes, that's why they're restricting freedom of speech and why freedom of speech is a royal pain in the butt. It's no longer a question of, if you can't beat them, join them. The establishment has issued its verdict and those whose opinions do not fall within the ever-narrowing borders of the mainstream have been declared anathema. The only problem the narrative managers now face is convincing their targets that they don't have the advantage of numbers. Thus, if you can't beat them, ban them. What's the point of having absolute power over the media otherwise? Failure to triumph in the marketplace of ideas by the topsy-turvy logic of the words are violence crowd merely means the marketplace needs stricter regulations. I like this line, listen to this. If 2 plus 2 cannot be persuaded to equal 5, that's only because math is racist. And there you go. And when the bridge you're driving over falls down, remember that line. If 2 plus 2 cannot be persuaded to equal 5, that's only because math is racist. In designating freedom of speech, once the foundation of American society, as a threat to democracy, the thought police running the media establishment have essentially completed the job of destroying everything that once made the country successful. 
the only question remaining is whether Americans are going to take this sort of insult sitting down. And that question goes out to my fellow Canadians. Because we are being insulted with the most incredible BS that you can possibly think of. And none of this will work. It's just that we have to go through a horrible experiment to find that out. So all I can say in conclusion is that you give up free speech at your peril. So if you've enjoyed this article, please like, comment and subscribe below. In the meantime, this is Hound Dog Steve signing off, wishing you a very pleasant evening and we'll talk very, very shortly. You take care now. Bye-bye.